guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to do something a little bit different today I'm going to share with you my favorite gnome and animal making crafting tools and supplies I'm going to show you each one of them I'm going to show you how I use them and I'm also going to show you how I drill my corks for my legs if you want to how to do all that stick around I show you how thanks for watching I love you guys Okay, my first one is a quarter inch by six inch dowel sticks, and these are great for standing gnomes, and they're also great for attaching ears and things like that if you're doing animals. And I'm just going to sharpen mine in my pencil sharpener, and this does a lot of different size dowels, so you could use, you could have um, multiple sizes of legs for this. And I sharpen them, and then to cut them, I'm just cutting them with the miter shear. You can cut it straight at a 90, you can turn it at different angles, and it cuts corks. Now for my legs, I like to add my corks with my dowel sticks, and I'm just taking a quarter inch drill bit since that's what size my dowel is, and I'm going to show you how I drill them. I use synthetic corks, and I'll give you the link for these. It's from a company called Widget.com, and you can buy them for like 20 cents a piece, but the synthetic ones are the ones that you want to use if you're going to drill them. To drill them, I just take it and put it on the end of my drill, and I just hold it straight and go in and out a few times on both sides and you can start with wherever the corkscrew came through but I'm going to show you because a lot of you said that you don't get them very straight it really doesn't matter if you get them completely straight if you're using two of them you can turn them and I'll show you here in a minute how I turn mine so that they do line up Okay, and after I get them drilled out, I'm just going to attach them to my dowel stick. This is what I would do if I were to make legs. I would put two of them on there. And then just take your corks and turn them until they line up. They will line up pretty close if you just turn them. Next, a small workspace vacuum cleaner is great for small projects, but if you have bigger jobs, you need a bigger vacuum, this Black & Decker handheld vacuum is a great vacuum. Okay, hey, next, I like the Sculpey Oven Bake Clay. The Sculpey 3 is actually my favorite. You can make hands with it, feet with it. You can make little elf ears with it. There's so many things that you can make with this. And once you bake it in the oven at 275 degrees for 15 minutes, it's pretty firm. Okay, then I also like the uh, air dry clay. This is great for if you're going to make um, little shoes. I just made some shoes for this little gnome. And I'm just pushing my cork into it and shaping it. And then you just let it air dry overnight. If you want a clay that bends after you bake it, cause clay bends, you can make arms and hands out of that. And then I also have a hand mold that I really like and a foot mold that I really like. And these are easy to get um, even the oven baked clay in. You just separate the finger area right here. This is a hand. Just open it up real good. Make little um, logs to put in there until you get each cavity completely full and they come out, they come out really nicely shaped. You just want to make sure that you do get these full, and you can use air dry clay in these or the oven baked clay, either one. Both of them work well with these. And then the oven baked clay adhesive is great for attaching pieces to each other. And then the wire I use for my hands and my legs is this wire here. These are my go to sewing scissors. I love these for fabric. They're Ginger scissors, they're made in Germany. You can sharpen them, and they stay sharp for a long time. Okay, next, I love these little wooden rulers. They're 12 inch and they're handy for everything. Okay, this is my go to fur. I buy this on Etsy and I'll give you the link for the store. It's got its two inch pile, it's got a great backing. It's easy where you can cut just the backing only on the fabric. But invest in some good fur. This piece here, I can probably get about 35 um, beards out of it for about $30. Okay, next is a pool noodle. These measure two and a quarter by 45 inches in length, and you can get 10 gnomes out of one noodle. And I get these at the Dollar Tree. Next, I get these 70 millimeter half ornaments from Amazon. They're great for if you want to make a hat for the top of the gnome, or if you want their hair to stand up straight, you just attach it right to the top part of your noodle or whatever you're using for your base. And I just glue my hair straight up to it. And then you can also make a baseball cap. You just cut your pieces and attach it to it. And I've done several videos where I've used this. So if you want to look back at some of my other videos, you can see exactly how I did this. And I've got some patterns for both. Just be creative in your hats or your tops. They don't all have to be pointy, pointy hat gnomes. They can just be creative and do something different. Okay, if you want a barefoot gnome, I'll give you the link for these. These work great. 
And then if you want arms and legs, go ahead and invest in some of these hair noodles. You can use these larger ones for the legs and you can use the smaller ones for the arms. And all you gotta do is run a dowel stick up underneath there to make it stiffen it. And then on the ones for the arms, you can just leave the wires in them. And to use the two together, you're just gonna cut a dowel stick to whatever length that you want it to be. And then you're gonna use the hair noodle part for the leg. And we're gonna put this right down inside of that foot and that'll hold your gnome up. These are a great way to make standing gnomes that are pretty solid. Now, if you have a lot of weight in your top part of your gnome and you're using these um, little feet, be sure and add some weights down into the toe area. This one here is actually gonna be sitting and so I'm just going to put the leg all the way down inside the foot and trim it off because it's going to be flush with his body. And then that's using the dowel sticks to stick inside of there and that's what's going to attach it to my styrofoam body. Okay, and then for the arms, you're just going to use the smaller of the hair noodles. Just go ahead and cut them in half because you can get two arms out of one noodle. Take the wire out and then put the wire back in after you cut it. And that way you can bend your arms. And I'm just taking it and fold it, rolling it up into some fabric. And if you want to know how to do this, watch some of my videos. I use it a lot. You can add your little hand down at the bottom. And then you just bend the wire and, and tie it right up to the top of your gnome. Okay, next I like these little shoes. These are actually parrot toys on Amazon. I'll give you the link for those. If you're going to use these, put some weight in the toes though. But these do make your gnome stand up really well and they do turn out pretty cute with these little shoes. These round balls are great for making like a head, like in an animal. These three inch discs are great for creating a body. What you do with these, I take two of these three inch discs together and I glue them together and I roll them up into some non-woven fabric and that way I can create a sleeve for the body. So in other words, you're not going to use any kind of a noodle or anything like that. This will become the body and you'll just fill the, the cavity up with um, stuffing and, and some beads. But you do want to use something that's non-woven on this so that your beads do not come out. But it's a good way to make just an inexpensive body. Next, I like to use some cones for the bodies. Um, you can use these larger ones for the body. You can make a small gnome with this one, or you can even use that to make a dog nose. All you got to do is just cover them with some fabric. If you're looking for a little knife tool set, this is a great one. It's by Fiskar. It's got a little saw blade that's got a real fine um, blade on it. It cuts through a pool noodle real easily. It cuts through styrofoam balls easily. And you can also use it on foam core board, the, whole, the other tips. So it's got quite a, a collection of tips in there. And then I'm just cutting my styrofoam balls with it. It cuts it pretty easy and pretty evenly. Okay, next I use a lot of these little rubber bands to hold things together until I can grab some string and tie it off. You want to make sure if you're putting um, weighted beads into something, you want to make sure you do tie it off with a string because these rubber bands eventually, they may pop, but you want to go ahead and tie it off just to secure it, just to make sure that nothing comes out. You definitely want to invest in some 5 16th inch nuts that you get at the hardware store. They're great for adding weight to your gnomes. They're great if you're using the Dollar Tree shoes. You can get two of these in here real easily. They're also good if you're going to use those feet that I showed you earlier or those shoes. Just put a Okay, if you're using the, something that's more hollow that you just want to add a lot of weighted beads to, these medium weight weighted beads are great. I'll give you the link for those. They're great for anything where that is not porous where the beads will not come out. Hey, if you've watched some of my videos, you've seen me use these quite a bit. The wire cutters definitely for some wire. Your needle nose pliers are great for turning things right side out. If you want to take your hat and turn it right side out, the needle nose pliers turn it out inside out quickly, and it does allow you to push it up there and make the point. Okay, I love these um, half beads. They're 15 millimeter half beads and you've seen me use them a lot on my noses for my gnomes. I also have some 10 and 12 millimeter ones for smaller gnomes and then some little um, 12 millimeter round beads for some hands. These are great for making hands and they're great for noses. Okay, my go-to glue gun is the Sure Bonder Mini. It's a high heat glue gun and then I use the Superior Bond 400 pack 
of glue sticks. I get these on Amazon. I'll give you the link. They're not stringy like other glue sticks. Okay, next is an embossing gun. This is really good if you glued two things together and you glued it wrong. If you heat it up, you can open up hot glue and usually you can save your piece. Next are the little um, animal eyes. You use them on little dolls or little animals. They come in a pack, a variety of different sizes. They even have some nose shapes in there. And they stick into your project pretty easy and they really add a lot of character to your project. Okay, next are these little white tubes. I buy them in a box from Amazon. They're about the size of a toilet paper roll, but they're a little bit stiffer. They're great for a, a gnome that you want to fill with um, some candy, or if you don't want to fill it with candy and just use it, you can put stuffing inside. But they are perfect for like a mini size gnome, like if you're going to put one on a tiered tray. Okay, and a lint brush is a must-have if you're making gnomes. It's great for cleaning up your workstation. If you just want to get some hair off of there, if you've made a gnome, it's good for cleaning the hair off of your project. It's just a great little tool to have. And for my workstation, this is my go-to favorite now. It, it's from Amazon. It's 15 inches um, deep, and it's 78 inches long, and you just cut it to the size you want. And you can probably get two or three mats out of here pretty easily. And if you get some stuff from Dollar Tree called Awesome, it cleans that mat so super clean, it even gets glitter off. You will love this product. My next favorite tool is my Cricut Maker. Now you can get a Cricut Maker 3 or just, this is just a regular Cricut Maker. But if you're going to cut, but if you're going to cut craft foam with this, you need to select felt wool fabrics. And then you'll use the rotary blade on that and then it will not chew up your craft foam like some of the other blades do. This cuts out a pattern so perfectly and so evenly. If you can afford one of these, this is a great investment. Okay, I've given you a link for all the tools and supplies that I use in this video in the description below. If you don't see them there, be sure and go to my website, www.pattyjgood.com, and you'll see them there. Be sure and give me a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified when I have another video upload. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.